Hello dear students, welcome back to the class. So in today's class, let us discuss about the peptide bond and its characteristics. Okay, now let us see how is a peptide bond formed. A peptide bond is a linkage formed between two amino acids. Here you can see this is one amino acid that is R1. CH and H2 COOH and this is the second amino acid R2 CH and H2 COOH. So a peptide bond is formed by the reaction between the alpha carboxyl group of one amino acid with the alpha amino group of the next amino acid. Okay, so this is a condensation reaction where a OH from this carboxylic acid group and a H from this alpha amino group is removed as a water molecule. So it is also called as a dehydration reaction. Thus, now you can see what is remaining now after the removal of a water molecule. This is CO and NH. That CO and NH, they link together form in an amide linkage or a peptide bond okay so let me now repeat again a peptide bond is formed by the reaction between the alpha carboxyl group of one amino acid with the alpha amino group of the next amino acid by the removal of a molecule of water forming CONH linkage or the peptide bond now this continues further now with the third amino acid this alpha carboxyl group reacts with this alpha amino group of the next amino acid and thus go on forming a polypeptide chain now in a polypeptide we can have one end which has a free amino group called as amino terminus or n terminus and another end which has a free carboxylic group is called as carboxy terminus or C terminus and each amino acid of this polypeptide are referred to as residues. Okay. Okay. Here we have some of the terms which you need to know. A peptide refers to a chain of amino acids linked together by the peptide bond. And now you know what is a peptide bond and how it is formed. Right. And similarly, depending on the number of amino acids present in a peptide, we call it as a dipeptide when a peptide contains two amino acids. Or when a peptide is made up of three amino acids, we call it as a tripeptide. And a tetrapeptide refers to a peptide with four amino acids. Then uh, oligopeptide is a peptide or it's a short peptide consisting of less than 10 amino acid which means a peptide with less than 10 amino acid is called as a oligopeptide then polypeptide refers to a long chain of peptide molecule then what is a protein molecule a protein is a functional molecule consisting of a polypeptide with more than 50 amino acid. A polypeptide consisting of more than 50 amino acid is known as a protein molecule when that polypeptide is a functional molecule or a functional moiety. And similarly, a protein can have either one or more polypeptide. A protein can uh, consist of either only one polypeptide chain or more than one polypeptide chain. For example, a lysozyme, which is an enzyme protein, is made up of a single polypeptide chain, whereas a hemoglobin, uh, it's a protein, and that is uh, made up of four polypeptide chains. So a protein can have either one polypeptide chain or more than one polypeptide chain present in it. And a polypeptide with more than 50 amino acids which is a functional molecule is called as a protein molecule. So now when you know how a peptide bond is formed, let us know about its characteristics. A peptide bond has some interesting characteristics which plays a role in a three-dimensional structure of a protein molecule. Here if you look at this first structure, 
a CONH the peptide bond the CN is a a single bond and you can see here the nitrogen has a unshared pair of electrons and CO is a double bond now here in the second structure if you look at a CO has become single bond and the CN is a double bond then what is correct either uh, whether uh, CN is a single bond or CN is a double bond now a uh, bond length shows that a single CN bond length is 1.47 Armstrong unit whereas a double bond between the CN is 1.27 Armstrong unit but the actual CN bond in a peptide is 1.32 angstrom unit which means to say it's neither a single bond nor a double bond why this is because of the resonance characteristics or the resonance property of the CN bond that makes it a, a special bond with 1.32 angstrom unit and this is restrict the rotation because it has a partial double bond character it is neither a single bond nor a double bond right because of this partial double bond character this restrict the rotation of the CN bond and thus plays a role in the three-dimensional structure of a protein molecule so this uh, double bond character of peptide and other amide was uh, deduced by Linus Pauling and uh, his co-workers. So coming back to the characteristics of a peptide bond, a peptide bond due to its partial double bond character is rigid and hence this prevents a free rotation around the CN bond and a peptide bond is planar in nature because all the six atoms that are involved in the peptide bond so starting from c alpha 1 to c alpha 2 so they all lie in a same plane hence a peptide bond is planar here you can see c alpha 1 then c oxygen nitrogen hydrogen and c alpha 2 so 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 all these six atoms they all lie in a same plane so the characteristics of a peptide bond is the first one is it is rigid due to the partial double bond character and it is planar in nature all the six atoms they lie in a same plane the next property of a peptide bond is a peptide bond has trans configuration why it has to have a trans configuration why not cis this is because if it is in the cis position there will be a steric interference or the steric interference due to the presence of the side chains at the r groups if all the r groups are present on the same side then there will be a steric hindrance that is why a peptide bond is trans and it is uncharged but is polar though it is uncharged it has a polarity and this polarity is due to the resonance or the delocalization of the electrons so as we know the cn bond is rigid due to its partial double bond character but still rotation can and does occur about the two single bonds on either side of the alpha carbon so the cn is rigid but the c alpha c and n c alpha these two bonds have a free rotation so these are the two bonds which have a free rotation that is we call the mass psi bond one which is between the c alpha one and the c and the pi bond is the one between n and c alpha so the psi bond is between c alpha 1 and c this is psi bond and between the n and c alpha 2 this is called as pi bond actually these are called as dihedral angles or torsion angles because these are the angles between the two bonds okay so now to summarize what is peptide bond or what are the characteristics of a peptide bond a peptide bond is planar rigid trans uncharged but polar and it has two torsion angle psi and 
5. So dear students, so far we have discussed about what is a peptide bond, how it is formed and what are its characteristics. I hope it is clear or I hope all of you have understood. So see you all in the next class. Thank you.